the title of this teaching is it's the Lord prepares us to depend on him he prepares us for these trials and tests we go through and we're going to learn with Elijah how he prepared Elijah for the things he was getting ready to do so with this 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 teaching is going to be on preparing us in 1st Kings chapter 16 verse 29 through 33 Ahab, son of Omri, began to rule over Israel in 38 years of King Asad's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 22 years, but Ahab, son of Omri, did what was evil in the Lord's sight, even more than any of the kings before him. And though it were not enough to follow the example of Jeroboam, he married Jezebel, the daughter of King Ethbel of Zenodonium, and began to bow down to worship of Babel. First they had built a temple and an altar for Babel in Samaria. Then he set up Ashrab Po. He did more to provoke the anger of the Lord than the God of Israel than any of the other kings of Israel before him. Okay, we have a king, Ahab, who's been king for 20 year, 22 years over Israel. And it says that he was evil in the Lord's sight. It says that he was even worse than the kings before him, and they were pretty bad. So for him to be worse than the others, King Ahab was an evil man. What made it even worse, he married Jezebel. Jezebel is a bad woman. I'm not going to teach much on Jezebel. I will speak a little bit, but not much on her. And he started to bow down to her idols, to her gods, Baal. He started to worship Baal. And let me say something about worshiping a little bit off the subject here. You know, we worship the Lord partly because we're taught in the church. You know, we should worship Him because of all He's done for us. He's given us salvation. That's that's something to worship him about and he's done he's given us many many blessings that's a good reason to worship him but you know what if God hadn't did nothing for us if he didn't give us nothing not even salvation he still is God and he still deserves worship we should worship God even if even if he doesn't do anything for us nothing he is God whether we believe it or not whether people out there believe it or not, he is God. And he should be worshipped. I just want to throw that in there because we seem to only worship him when he's doing stuff for us. Blessing us. But we need to bless, we need to worship him even when things are going bad. Jezebel, who tried to destroy all of God's prophets in Israel, she tried to destroy him. And as she did destroy him, she would replace him with the prophets of Baal. Like I said, Jezebel was a very bad woman, very wicked woman. And Baal, he's, Baal is a god of uh, the Canaanites religion. He was their god and they worshipped him. And she also, later on, in, if you read uh, the rest of Kings, chapter 18, if you read, uh, she, she threatened to kill Elijah. And I'm going to talk just a little bit on that, but not much. Bad woman, okay? Jezebel was a bad woman. People are so gullible, like King Ahab, and even Christians today, even Christians today are gullible. They believe things they hear and they don't even check it out. They don't go to the Word of God to check it out. But the Lord said in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slights of man and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. The devil is out there with many of its demons even with its little antichrists. He's out there with the people he's already deceived having them putting out lies. He's just waiting to deceive us. And the Lord says right here that we henceforth be no more children that are that way tossed to and fro. We're not supposed to be that way anymore. When we were in the Word of God, we know the Word. That's why he said to study to show yourself approved. He didn't say just read the, the Word. He said study. Study is totally different from just reading. 
We need to study the Bible. The Lord said it. Study to show yourself approved. And because King Ahab turned from God of Israel, the Lord tells him in 1 Kings, the next chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. But verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was the inhabitant of Galead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord of God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. So Elijah's telling them, there's not going to be any rain for, well, we're going to find out it's been about three years. But there's not going to be any rain or dew. If you read the Old Testament, you'll see that this is the first time Elijah is even mentioned in the Bible. Nobody even know who, knows who Elijah is. This is the first verses, scriptures, that we hear about Elijah and God used them you know God can use people who are not famous God can use people who are not well known because of their uh, title as whatever it may be a lot of people are known because of their titles and what they've done but God's using a man right here and we're gonna find out he is a man of God he is a very he was a very good prophet and God used him before anybody knew him. And we find that Elijah tells King, King Ahab that there's not going to be any rain or dew for the next several years. Now, this is Elijah that nobody knows. God told Moses and Elijah. Here he tells Elijah. But God has told Moses. He's told Elijah. Look, I want you to go tell this king. To tell a king. Not just a, a person on the street. God told these men these men of God, he says, I want you to go tell this king what's going to happen, what I'm going to do. Do you think that was an easy task for them? Do you think that was easy for them to obey? God commanded them, go tell this king. And, and there, Moses was a, was a Jew. And the Romans thought nothing of Jews. Yeah. Elijah wasn't even known here. Nobody even knew who he was until now when he's mentioned in the Bible. But he sent these guys to go tell a king. We get all upset and can't do it when he tells us just to go tell normal people on the streets about me. We can't even do that. But these men right here, these are men of God. These are Christians. God tells them, go tell this king. And they obey. Should we have any problems whatsoever telling people who we work with, who we're around, wherever, about Jesus I mean, if these guys can go to a king that can easily kill them on the spot if they wanted to, because the king's word back, back then was powerful. Yeah. Whatever the king said, they did. When, he's, when the king said, go behead uh, John the Baptist, they did it. So these men pretty much took their life in, in their own hands, but God told them to do it, and they did it. So when God tells us to do it, we need to obey. We need to obey God. Because He's not... God, the Lord is really not asking us to do anything big. I mean, go tell people about me. Just people, normal people. He's not telling us to go to the government, to the president. He's not telling us to do that. He's just telling us to go and tell people. People just like us. And we can't do that. And here we have these men of God that go to a king and tell them, Hey, our God said... Think about it. Most of the time we don't do it because we're afraid. Or like I said, we believe the lies of the devil. Well, you, you, you can't do that or you shouldn't do that. we got to get away from that. we got to look at these men. Remember, Moses, oh, he's a great man of God. But he was a man. He's a man just like us. Elijah was a great prophet. Again, he's a man. We gotta remember these things. This is what happens when we obey the Lord. Leviticus twenty six, verse three and four. If we walk in if ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, this is the Lord speaking, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield her their fruit. So what it's saying here, if we obey him, he says he will give us our needs. And that's what he's saying right here. 
when it's you know you need rain I'll give you rain but pretty much what he's saying right here keep my statutes keep my commandments and I will take care of you I will take care of your needs some people get confused between needs and wants and there's a lot of times the Lord gives us our wants also but he will give us our needs if we keep his commandments amen, amen. <coughs> so we see that when we turn from the Lord see the things that can happen he brought a well he didn't bring no rain to Israel now when you don't have no rain there's no crops when you don't have no rain what are the what are the, the livestock the animals what they're gonna drink right. so when you don't have these things guess what you're lacking of food too yeah. it's not good it's not good to disobey the Lord it's not good to turn from him and when he does and these things happen to us we can't blame God if he takes things away from us and we if we're well off and then all of a sudden we're poor it's our fault it's the Lord has shown us right here because they disobeyed me and because the king was such a wicked king over Israel and the people followed him they obeyed him partly because he was king but we have many men of God that I can go and show you they did not obey the king if it went against God's rules his commands they did not obey the king just like now in this country I will live according to the law if it's a law I will obey it but if they tell me I need to bow down to the flag my pledge my allegiance to the flag I'm not gonna do it my allegiance is to the Lord only period it's not to a flag it's not to a country I'm glad I'm in a country where we can pray worship and all that but I am not proud to be here because we are getting further this country is getting further and further away from the Lord with all the stuff they want to take the Lord out of but when the Lord chastises this country and he is I mean, he's already started. Look at what's going on. Yeah. Riots. I mean, it's bad already. And then the Lord tells Elijah in verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook sheriff that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook sheriff that is before the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. It's kind of hard to understand that the Lord tells a man Elijah hey go tell this king that a king go tell him what's gonna happen then then he tells him he's got to go hide hmm. Almighty God he tell he tells this man to go tell this king that and then he tells this man to go hide yeah. <laughs> you know he gave this man boldness the man had boldness because the Lord gave it to him yeah. and then he takes this man who who did what God said and then he tells them to go high. Let me say this. That many churches wouldn't preach this. That's This is negative. You think the, the churches that preach positive thinking. You think they're going to preach this? Hmm. Go hide? Yeah. Oh wait a minute. That's not very positive. No it's not. But that's what God told him to do. Yeah. He said go hide. In verse 4. It says. And it shall be. That thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. That's kind of strange that the Lord would do that. Because in Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 3. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. And then down in verse 14 it says. And every raven after his kind. So birds, ravens. And there's a list there. But i just shown these two. He's saying a raven was an abominable thing. But then he's going to use this unclean bird to feed Elijah. It's, it's a bird that's a savinger. Yeah. You know, like I said, God is God. 
and he can do whatever he wants. Right. And it will be right. He's not an evil God. I wouldn't worship an evil God. He uses his bird to do something for him. This this savager, he uses his nasty bird to feed Elijah. But then I look at myself. He's using me to preach his holy words. You hear me? He's me. Who who am I? I'm nobody. In God's eyes, I'm his child. Right. But besides that, I'm dirt. But what but what does he do? He uses me. He uses me to teach us his words. Not I mean we're talking about his words. We're talking about God's words. So God, he he can use anything he wants. I mean I, I'm living proof of it. Jesse, you know, I got a high school diploma. That's it. And he's using me to put out his word. So don't look. Well, many people look for men who have titles. Oh, yeah, well, he's got this title. I'm going to listen to him. Yeah. But remember Jesus? Did he have a title? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was just a carpenter. And they didn't listen to him either. Most of them. Some of them did. But they didn't listen to Jesus. So God uses... He don't go and say, well, let me get this guy here because he's real popular. He's very educated. He's very intelligent. No, God uses... The average small man. I see that all through the Bible. Like I said, there's men out there that are much more intelligent than I am. I'm like Moses. He used Moses in a mighty way. But I'm like Moses. Moses was slow of speech. That's what the Bible says. It says he wasn't an eloquent speaker. But he used them. Just like me. I'm not a very good reader. I've always hated reading. But I love reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. Even though I might stutter when I'm reading, that's okay. The word, the word is touching my heart. It's touching my spirit. I don't have to come up here and sound like an eloquent speaker. Moses was slow of speech. Well, I don't talk very fast either. Sometimes when the Holy Spirit takes over, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, I just let the Lord use my lips and put it out there calmly. Because we don't need yelling. We really don't need yelling like a lot of preachers. They out there yelling like, like we can't hear. Maybe we're hard of hearing or something. But they don't feel like they're preaching unless they're yelling. Well, the Lord hasn't led me to yell. If I ever yell, you better believe it. It's from God. Okay? Because I'm not a yeller. But uh, we're not very intelligent. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 25. And I say we. I'm talking about pastors, preachers. I'm talking about intelligent men who have scholars and have all diplomas in, the, in all kind of things. God says in verse 21, Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. Who's he calling pre uh, foolish? Preachers. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what he's saying right here, ain't it? He has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. So this is just showing me, hey, we're all, we're all. You think, you think I'm slow? Well, God looks at the most intelligent man here, the greatest speaker ever lit, that ever lived. He looks at that man as being very slow also. I just want to show you, in God's eyes, none of us are intelligent. None of us are great speakers. Now, verse 5 it says, he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. The Lord gave him this commandment to do, and he did it. But then again, like I said, then he tells him to go hide. He follows his great commandment, and he goes and hide. And Elijah could have gotten the big head here. I mean, look how the Lord used me on this. He's probably, my next ministry is probably going to be something big also. I'm sure that's what he's thinking. He told him to go hide. Did he refuse? Did he question the Lord? If we read the scriptures, he didn't question the Lord. He just did what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting the big head and thinking he was somebody, the Lord said, go hide. And he went. He didn't question him. He didn't show that he got angry at him. He just did it. We're seeing here that Elijah is just obeying the Lord no matter what. 
uh, God told him to do this great thing, he did it. And then God told him to do this wimpy thing, and he did it. He called him to a place called Sheriff. There's nothing there. In fact, in Hebrew, Sheriff means ditch. So he's sending them somewhere that has nothing. It's like a ditch. Did this man do it? Yeah. Yes, he did it. Can we do that? We we can learn so much from this. And not only that, he might have thought, well, what did I do wrong? Yeah. You know, you do all this great thing, and then God tells you to go over there, and you're thinking, well, I thought he, I did what he told me to do. Why is he sending me over here? Did I did I do something wrong? I mean, that's what we would think in the flesh. In James, chapter 5, verse 17, Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are. So he's just like us. Like if God would have done that to me, this is what I would have done. This is what I would have thought. Or maybe I would have even got worse. Maybe I would have thought, what? After this? No, I ain't going over there. Really, seriously. Yeah. Elijah, it says right here, he was just like a man. And if I had thought it, I'm sure he could have thought it. The Lord allowed the ravens to feed him and the brook to dry up for a reason. He didn't want Elijah to depend on these things. The brook, the river had water for him to drink. The ravens was bringing him food. God wants to show him, I'm the one taking care of you. Now what we're going to learn here for today are we de depending on our abilities, Jody? Are we depending on our abilities? Are we depending on our job? The Lord gave us these things. But when we start depending on that instead of the Lord, and this is what he's trying to show Elijah here. He, don't want, he, he, he took these things away from Elijah to show Elijah. And we're going to see it. Look, I'm the one taking care of you. Don't start looking at the ravens or the, or the, the brook. Because you got these things to drink and eat. No, I'm the one who's supplying it. I gave it to you. Your college education, I gave it to you. I gave you that wisdom to make it through college. We start giving credit to ourselves. That's what the devil uses. When we're not giving the credit and the glory to the Lord. And we're giving it to our job. Whatever we have. If we're giving it to whatever, besides the Lord, that's from the devil. He does not want us to give any kind of credit or glory to the Lord. And that's what, and like I said, that's what the Lord is doing here with Elijah. I'm taking all this away from you. Because I want you to see, and we're going to see it, I'm taking care of you. Not these things. And I translated it to today. If you're making it because of your job... It's wrong. If you're making it because of whatever it is. You got money from a relative, father, mother. When they died, you got all this money. And When we have things, we need to give all glory to the Lord. I got, I got this because of the Lord. Not because of my, my job that I have. Not because whatever. It came from the Lord. You know, again, let me just say this. Insurance... Insurance companies that can easily go bankrupt. Is your is your uh, are you depending on the insurance to see you through life? Oh, if this goes wrong, I got this insurance. Or if this happens, I got this insurance. It's wrong, people. Insurance can easily fade away. Can easily get go bankrupt. Then what? Investments. Same thing. Investments. People who invest. In the stock market, that's that's even a bigger mistake. That's I've said it before. The stock market's gonna fall, it's gonna crash, and it's not gonna come back. It's in the Bible. But you don't know how many people that are depending on that investment for their retirement. Are they depending on the Lord? No, they're depending on that investment to make it through their retirement. Or they're depending on their savings to make it when they retire. Listen to me. I know people are not going to like this, but this is the Word of God. He will take whatever it is you're depending on away. 
to show you, hey, I'm the one who's been taking care of you. You were dependent on that? No, I'm the one who's been doing it. And when we start depending on anything else but the Lord, wives, don't depend on your husband. You love your husband. Submit to your husband. Be happy with your husband. But you never know when he's going to die. So you love your husband and you, de- you depend on him for his love because women need it. We all need compassion. But always see that the husband has what he has because of the Lord. Same thing with, with wives. Husbands don't depend on our wives. My, I depend on Jody for a lot of things. I know it's coming from the Lord. I know it's coming from the Lord. I'm the, I know that He's using her to help me. Whatever, whatever I need help on. I give the credit to the Lord. I don't give credit to any person. If that person helped me in any kind of way, I say thank you Lord. Because I know He used that person to help me. But I don't look at that person and say, Oh, uh, and give that person the credit. I hope you understand what I'm saying. This is the Lord showing us here. He's He's shown this. When you when we read this, this is what He's doing. This I'm gonna show you. This is why He took the, the ravens away. He took the brook away. Most of us, if the Lord tells us to do something we don't like, you know what we do? We ignore it. We ignore what He told us. Elijah didn't ignore it. We do that. Way too many times. Christians. I'm talking about Christians. A lot of times they ignore what the Lord tells them. Or shows them in the Word. In the Bible. They ignore it. True born again Christians like Elijah here. Do not ignore the Lord's, The commandments of the Lord. You want to walk with the Lord? You obey Him. If you're not obeying Him. Then you're not walking with Him. Right? Now there's something else God was showing in these verses. And that's the miracles He performed. He was doing miracles here. The ravens, they're, they're, they're buzzards. They're afraid of people. You go down the highway, you coming down the highway, they're going to fly off. But they also, when they get food, you're not going to take it away from them either. And that's what he used, a raven, to come to a man that, like I said, ravens are scared of men. But this raven would fly to Elijah and bring him food. Bring him food. Instead of keeping the food, like I said, buzzards, they don't let go of their food. Right. And so this, this was a miracle. This savager bird was, was not scared of Elijah and brought food to him instead of taking food away from him. Right. And so that's a miracle right there. Yeah. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. He can use whatever He wants to help us. He uses lost people to help Christians a lot of times. We shouldn't question the Lord on how He does things. He's God and He can do it any way He wants. We need to trust Him and because He will meet our needs. He, he met Elijah's needs with a savager bird. But He met His needs. Amen. We're going to learn from the teaching that when the brook dried up, the Lord will have something else for Elijah. Like I said, did Elijah get word that the brook dried up? It doesn't say it in the scriptures. They don't say that he panicked. Because he knew that God, Elijah was learning that God was going to supply his needs. We need to be like Elijah. When it says in verse 7 that the book dried up, it doesn't say anywhere, like I said, it doesn't say anywhere where he panicked, where he got worried. It doesn't say that anywhere in that chapter. Christians today, that's, that's most of us do. We worry. We panic. When the test comes, and this is all a test. We're going to find out these are all tests that God is putting on, on Elijah for what's coming up. But these were all tests, and, and Elijah was passing every one of them. With flying colors, I may say. Christians today, most of us do, we worry. We start to panic when things don't go right. Guess what? We're failing our tests. The Lord, the Lord puts things there to test us, to show us to show us, because he already knows, to show us where we're at with him. Are you passing the test that the Lord is bringing through your life? Is he bringing things there and you're having troubles obeying? Well, he's showing you. He's showing you where you're at with him. It's not that he's trying to find out because he already knows. He already knows what happens before it even happens. He's foreseen everything already. 
God wouldn't have been able to use Elijah where what he's getting ready to do with him. He wouldn't have been able to use him if he would have failed these tests. So if the Lord is giving you some tests to do and you fail it, he might have had something great for you to do. But because you failed this test over there, over here, now he can't use you over here. Hope you understand what he's saying. The Lord is preparing Elijah for tests ahead. He's got tests now, but there's yet more to come. We're going to see. He's getting him ready for what's going to happen. And, it's, and like I said, I got more to read. In verse 8, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Serapath, which belongs to Zion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Just like, just like he commanded the ravens to feed him, now he's having this widow woman to take care of him. Again, we wouldn't think God would use a widow woman. Who's supposed to be taking care of the widows? We are. The church. We're supposed to be taking care of them. Now, but she's, God has a widow woman who's going to take care of Elijah instead of the other way around. It's just, the Lord is just doing all kinds of things here. We're like, wow. You know, it's like we're scratching our heads. Yeah, Elijah's scratching uh, his head. <laughs> Just like we wouldn't think he'd, he'd have an unk bird feed him. Now he's having a widow woman take care of him. God has shown us that we, that he can, like I said before, he can use lost people to help us. Or he can, widows, when, when women become widows, does that mean the Lord can't use them anymore? That they can't do nothing for the Lord anymore? No, it don't. You know, we look at them as, oh, poor, she lost her husband, you know, we need to take care of which we do. But God can still use them. He's using this widow right here. So if there's any widows out there who, who, who think, well, that's it, it's not it. You can still walk with the Lord, and the Lord can still use you to do things. Amen. In verse 10, So he arose and went to Serapath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel, that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Verse 12, And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, meaning cook it, that we may eat and die. First, let me show you. Here we have a preacher, a man, telling the woman, you know, before you eat, before you and your son eat, come feed me. Now, the only reason Elijah did that was because God told him to. But we have people today who will feed their priests, pastor, preacher, whatever, before they feed themselves. Because that's how they look at that man. That's, it's almost a sign of, well, I'm going to say it's a sign of worship. They put these men so high that before they do anything for themselves, they feed the man first. And like I said, the only reason Elijah did this is because God told him to. But we're, also, they have preachers that teach if you confess anything negative, with your mouth, it's going to come about false. I've heard that many times. But don't say that because the devil hears it and he's going to make it come true. This woman says right here, she's going to eat and then she's going to die. If that were true, then this lady would be, she would die. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's what it says right here. But we're going to see through this teaching, she didn't die. Yeah. So how can they say, well, don't confess that because that's what she did. She confessed that she was going to die. This was her last meal, and they were going to die. So, I see people who do that, who say, "Oh, you can't don't confess that with your mouth." Or I'll just I'll just come to this verse and I'll say, "Well, this lady did, yeah. and she didn't die." As a you know, this is studying the Bible. This is why we study the Bible. So when someone comes to us with a false teaching like that. We can show them, hey, uh, I don't believe you. And the reason I don't believe you because if you read blah, 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 it shows that it's wrong. Right. You see why we study the Bible? We can go to somebody and who believes 
and don't confess things, negative things, we're going to show them that's false. When you read about confessions in the Bible, it has something to do with the Lord. When you read about confessions in the Bible, it's not the devil hearing it and making them come true, like I said. Now, did Elijah get confused? He's in God's will. These eyes, ears might see something different. Because he's, he's like, like I said, he's done all this and now he's, he was hidden. Now he's out of food. Now he's going to a woman. I mean, re remember all the things Elijah's going through. And now he's, he's like, he's listening to this lady saying, this is all I got. You know, I plan to feed this with, to my son and I, and then that's all and we're going to die. You know, if you're a man and you're hearing this from a woman, I mean, would you start thinking, well, maybe I didn't hear it from the Lord right. I'm having, I'm going to take this woman's last meal. But we're going to see, we're going to see it didn't. But let me say this. Do you, do we live by our five senses? Is that the way we live? We live by faith. Yeah. That's what we live by. The world don't know about the sixth sense. The sixth sense is faith. And that's what Christians live by. I don't go by with what I see. I use these eyes so I can drive. I can use these eyes so I can read. But I don't use these eyes to, 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 uh, to lead me. Because I need them to see. I need these eyes to see spiritually. So our five senses is good. We need them. But more than that we need our sixth sense. Which is faith. Elijah is not living by his five senses because if he was, he'd probably already stopped. Lord, Lord, I don't understand any of this. I, I mean, I can't see what you're doing here. All right? We live by faith. Faith is believing whatever God tells us to do. That's what faith is. Jesus said to the disciples in the New Testament to feed the thousands. He told the disciples, feed the thousands. But we only have a, a, this many loaves of bread and this many fish. Jesus said, feed the thousands. They were looking with his eyes. These physical eyes. Oh, we only got this much. Yeah. What, did, what did the Lord do? He fed them. Thousands. But they had to confront them and say, oh, we only have this much. They were looking with the wrong eyes. We're going to see that the Lord had plans for this woman. She didn't see him. Elijah didn't see him. But we're going to see him. Because now we have this to read. Yeah. The Lord has shown us here. But at the time, this woman thought she was going to die. Elijah, I'm sure he, he probably questioned, well, I'm not going to eat your last meal. But he did. Why? Because God said so. Because Elijah knew there's a reason why the Lord's having me eat this food. This last meal. Because he didn't know the Lord was going to keep on and keep on. Just like those disciples didn't know that the Lord was going to make that basket into tons of fish and bread. But again, what did Elijah do? He obeyed. Verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. This is what he's telling the woman. Go and do as thou hast said. But make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. Now, in this verse it was okay for Elijah to say to this woman, because we're going to see that he's going to take care of the lady. He's telling her again, like I said, feed me. But then he says, and after make for thee and for thy son. And she, she was showing him, I only have enough for me and my son. But he says right here, make it for me, for thee, and after, after that, for thee and for your son, there will be food. He knew God was going to do something because God had, her, had him eat the last meal and he knew God had something. He was going to do something. He didn't know what, but he knew God was going to do something. And that's us. That's the way we should be. You know, Lord, I don't understand this, but I'm going to do it. There are people out there who feel... There's people out there who live only by these eyes. There's people out there who live only by the five senses. Something that they can see and understand. If they hear, they touch it, they can understand it. But faith, like I said, faith... Faith is when God tells you to do something, just like Elijah. And I repeat myself here, but it's, it's so important. Elijah obeyed. Well, you know, he could have very easily, like I said, 
I'm not going to eat your last meal from a woman and her son. But he obeyed. He didn't understand it, but he obeyed. Verse 14. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste. So Elijah is telling them, telling the woman, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crews of oil fail, until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Elijah is giving her a word from the Lord. He's giving her a word. Because Elijah said this because he got a word from the Lord. Elijah is giving her a word from the Lord. And now this woman has, has faith. Because she's heard from the Lord. Elijah, you, God used him to tell her that. He wouldn't have told her that. Because if, if we say things and, and God didn't tell us to do it. What happens if it doesn't happen? We're a big fat liar. And nobody's going to listen to us again. You hear what I'm saying? So you better know, if you tell somebody something, you better make sure it's from the Lord. Because if you, I see that too many times. Well, God told me to do it. Uh, by the way they're doing it, or whatever. I can I, I know the Word of God. And when, he, when someone does something and they say it's from God, God told them. But then I see what they're doing, or it's not true. That's using God's name in vain. When the verse says not to use his name in vain, that's using it in vain because you're using it for your advantage. For your advantage. Not not because God told you, but you know, well, if I say God did this, who's going to question me? Because if they question me, then they're questioning the Lord. Like I said, you hear. Faith is that you hear first and believe. Like I said, people have a hard time with this. Joshua, he believed he told people, his people, he said, hey, look, let's go march around this this wall, the enemy. Let's go march around it. And they're like, okay. So they're marching around it, thinking something's going to happen. But then they go home. Yeah. Then the second day, they march around it again. Elijah tells them, let's, you know, by the third, fourth day, they're going, their plate scratching their head. Has he lost it? I mean, nothing's happening here. But on the seventh day, what happened? They walked around it. They shouted, and the walls came down. So when things are happening and you don't understand it, just keep doing it. If it's from the Lord, you just keep doing it. You might not understand it, but keep doing it. Just like a, just like Joshua right here. Another was Noah. Look at Noah. Noah built a boat. There was no ocean. There was no river. There was no lake. In fact, in Genesis... Chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. And every plant of the field before it was in before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the of the ground. They didn't have no ocean, they didn't have no lakes, they didn't have no rivers because everything grew by the dew. Of the day. But it do. You know how you get up early in the morning. The grass is wet. Yeah. That's how everything grew. It didn't rain. Didn't have lakes. Didn't have oceans. This is the way everything grew. And that's, just, that's, why, that's why I'm saying Noah. Build his boat. Did Noah obey? Yeah he obeyed. He did it. But we. Probably we would have said. What? First we would have said. What's a boat? Because they didn't know nothing about boats, they didn't have no water. But he told them, build a boat. And Noah's like, I don't know what it is, but the Lord showed him what to do. So he's building this boat. And what happens? It floods. Yeah. Noah did not know why he was building this boat. Noah didn't even know what it was going to be, but he obeyed God. Do you hear me? Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what the Lord is, is showing us tonight? Just listen to him. Obey him. Obey the Lord. Amen. Obey the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't understand, and a lot of times we don't understand. If you're going to go on your own five senses, your own understanding, you're going to lose. You'll fail tests that the Lord will bring your way. And if that doesn't bother you, well, what you're saying is, well, it doesn't bother me I'm not walking with the Lord. That's what you're saying. Not only do I have spiritual ears, but you have to have spiritual Spiritual eyes 
you have spiritual ears. When people say something to me, I hear what they're saying. What they're really saying. They say it in a roundabout way, but I hear what they're saying. And a lot of times I let them know. So what you're saying, well, no, no, that's not what I said. No, that's exactly what you said. But they try to put it in a nice, sweet way. Yeah. Not only did the Lord give me the eyes to see spiritually, but He also has given me ears to hear. Because He says, let him who have ears hear. But this is faith. Remember, this is faith. Joshua. Faith. He did all that by faith. God told him to do it, so he did it. Didn't make sense, he did it. Noah. Didn't make sense, but he did it. Because he heard first. They didn't go and, and did something to see if God was there. I'm going to have faith God's going to be there. That's not faith. I see that a lot. I hear that a lot. You know, go do it. And have faith that the Lord's going to be there. That's not faith. What you're doing is is you're just doing your going. Well, I'm going to do this, and if okay. God is there, if if God is there, great. If He isn't, then I just messed up. Yeah. Verse 15. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. She heard a word from the Lord and obeyed. That's what she did. And we see here, it wasn't just her and her son. There was people in her house. Because it says, and her house. Doesn't mean in her house ate. It, said the, it means that the people that were in her house ate also. Amen? Amen. Verse 16. And the barrel Amen. of meal waste not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. Let me just say this real quick before I go on. There was no breath left in him. Do you can you believe that there's some commentaries out there? They don't think the boy died. They teach that the boy didn't die. Somebody needs to go to that commentary, hold his nose. So he has no breath and see if he dies. Take the breath away from him and let's see if he lives. I mean really, seriously. That's how some of these commentaries are. There was no breath left in him. In him. Yeah. Can you live without without breathing with no breath in you? I mean you read that in the commentary. Or it's like, what? Are you serious? But it's in there. Verse 18. And she said unto Elijah, what have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sins to remembrance and to slay my son? This woman has been taken care of, of by the Lord. The Lord's been taking care of her. And now something happened has happened bad. You know, her son dies. And now she's blaming God. She's blaming God, but she's using Elijah because he's a man of God. So she's telling him about it. You know, did you come to kill my son because of my sins? Because yeah. that's what it's saying. Are you paying me back for the sins I've done by killing my son? She's asking him. That's pretty much what we do. When things are going good, we give ourselves the credit. Most of us do it. We give ourselves the credit. But as soon as things start going bad, we blame the Lord. If they're good, it's us. If it's bad, it's the Lord. And believe me, a lot of people are that way. If it was Christian, I'd go slap them across the head. But that would be very Christian-like. We're going to find out that God's going to use her son dying for his glory. Man, this has all, this whole teaching is like, I do not understand. I mean, sure, they were like, they could not understand what was going on. Just like here, the woman, after serving the, uh, Elijah, the man of God, and living by the Lord, he's feeding her, and then all of a sudden he's going to yeah. take her son. You know, that's hard to understand, but we're going to let's keep on reading. Yeah, well, I probably like <laughs> <laughs> we're going to find out further in the further in the teachings. Like I said, they don't know why the Lord allowed it to happen, <clears throat> but we're going to, like I said, we're going to see the Lord's preparing Elijah. Verse 19 <laughs> And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom 
and carried him up into a loft and where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. Verse 20. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow and with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? So we see even Elijah is getting confused here. You know, have you brought me over here so you can kill her son? Up until now, the Lord has been telling Elijah what to do. He's been telling Elijah, right? He's been telling him what to do, and Elijah's just been obeying, right? Now, he doesn't have a word from the Lord. We're going to see. He doesn't have a word from the Lord to heal this boy. We're going to see that as we read. Verse 21, And he stressed himself upon the child three times, and, carried, and cried unto the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him on again. This is not a sign for someone to get healed. We have to pray for him three times. Because as I said, Elijah laid himself on him, for, prayed for him three times. Which I know there will be some religions out there and show this. Hey, look, look what happened here. So we need to, we need to pray three times. No, you don't need to pray three times. You know why he prayed three times? It's very simple. Because the Lord didn't do anything on the first two times. <laughs> it's that simple. Really, it's very simple. This is not a, a sign or, or a commandment. This He prayed for the guy three times. The, the reason he did it three times because the Lord didn't do anything on the first two times. And if he wouldn't have done nothing on the third time, he might have kept on. Yeah. But you'll have preachers out there who will show, hey, you want this person healed, we need to do this three times. The Lord will explain to us. He will totally make it understandable if we need to do something. But right here, it doesn't say anything. And the, and the Lord told him to pray three times. It don't say that. Like I said, all up until now, Elijah has been doing what the Lord has been telling him. But now Elijah's moving on his own. Okay, we're going we're gonna to read about that. <clears throat> what we need to notice here is that Elijah is praying not commanding he's not commanding the Lord heal this man in the name of Jesus no and you got a lot of preachers who do that heal in the name of Jesus no Elijah is praying he's praying not commanding there's a big difference if the Lord is telling you to go heal a person then he'll tell you then you go like Peter did in Acts chapter 3 verse 1 through 6 Peter went to that to that uh, the lame man that set out the gate. He goes and he tells the man in the name of Jesus, because the Lord told him. So the, he didn't go and pray for the God. Well, let me pray for him. No, God didn't say go pray for him. God said go heal this man. So Peter went over there and said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That's when God tells you to do something. This is the way you do it. That's the way you do it. When God commands you to do it. Elijah didn't do that here. Elijah prayed. Prayed to the Lord. Like I said. If, you, if, if the Lord told you. You don't have to pray. God told Peter to do that. But Peter, did Peter go over there and say. I'm going to pray and ask for your healing. No. He, the Lord didn't ask. God already told him to do it. Verse 22. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came into him again and he revived why did the Lord hear Elijah when he prayed because through these verses we see that Elijah obeyed the Lord right obeyed him in everything and he did what God told him to do and because of that God heard his prayer like it says in James 5.16 the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much now let me say this in English. The prayer of a person living right with God, God listens closely to his prayers. That's what it means in English. You want God to hear your prayers? Walk with him. Obey him. Seriously. Obey him. Walk with the Lord. If you're not walking with the Lord, if you're not obeying the Lord, your prayers are not being heard. Because right here the Lord says, a prayer of a righteous man. And a righteous man is someone who walks with the Lord. 
Verse 23, And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chambers into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. When we show people that we're doing what God tells us to do, when we show people that we're walking with the Lord, it's going to be like this woman. She says, Now I know you're a man of God. The word of the Lord is in thy mouth is true. So what Elijah was saying, she knew that this was truth because he was a man of God. Amen. I tell you that God was going to use that boy's death for his glory. Did he? Now we see it. Elijah, up until that time, just obeyed. But he obeyed so much that his, his faith was growing. Because every time God told him to do something, he saw that God was there and took care of it. So his faith was growing all this time, which our faith should be. When God just keeps showing us, I tell you, stay with me, walk with me, and I'll take care of that. When he does that over and over, your faith just grows. And that's what happened to Elijah here. His faith just grew. Like I said, a lot of times we don't know why God allows things to happen. But we need to be faithful. Trust in God. Trust in God. Know no, he's taking care of us. If we're walking with him. The Lord gave Elijah these tests to show him that he could trust and believe in him. The Lord did these things not only for this right here. Now after after Elijah prayed, prayed to the Lord, and the Lord heard him because he was a righteous man, and he and he healed this boy. You know what that did to Elijah? It made him much stronger. A much stronger man of God. He needed to be that way. Now here I'm closing the teaching here. Just to show how the Lord tested Elijah in many cases. And Elijah passed every test and obeyed. Even though he didn't understand. He tested and he obeyed. This by healing this boy. It just made his his faith grow stronger. And he was going to need that. Because in the next chapter, he's going against 400 prophets of Baal, false prophets. Elijah, one man of God, is going to go against 400 prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of uh, Asherah. He's going to go against 800 prophets in the next chapter. Just one man of God is going to go against 800 prophets, false prophets. He challenges, he challenges their God. These prophets, gods, he challenged them. In the next chapter you'll see, hey, let's build an altar of just wood. And we'll see whose God can make fire on that wood. So the false prophets, they prayed, they did did all kind of stuff. Nothing happened. And it even says Elijah even made fun of them. But then when it came Elijah's turn, not only did, not only the Lord, it's like Elijah said, look, your God couldn't even start that fire on that wood. Let me show you. I'm going to make it even harder for my God. He, tro- he drenched the wood with water. They said it just drenched where water was just running off the sides. He put so much water on it. Then he said, then he prayed to the Lord. And what do you think the Lord did? He started that fire. He started that wood. All the people looked at him with like... You do have the true God because their gods couldn't do on dry wood. They couldn't start a fire. And Elijah had those prophets killed. When Jezebel heard this, made her very mad because that's where those were her gods. Those were that that was those were her prophets. So when she heard it, she made it very. She got very angry. And in chapter 19, verse 2, she said, "May the gods strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow." I have not killed you just as you killed them. Now, I stop right here. I could have gone on, but if I could have, if I would have went on, then we would have seen the weak side of Elijah. Because after this, he went and hid, not because God told him to, because he got scared. Yeah. Remember, he's a man. So, I could teach that also, but I, what I want to teach is we need to obey God 
pass these tests that he's, he puts us through so he can use us for whatever these tests are for if you want to be used by God if you're content with your sitting on the bench doing nothing for him okay well stay there that's not me I want God to use me I study his words I want him to use me use me and these tests that he throws at me I'm sure I haven't passed every one of them but I sure I sure want to and I'm sure I've passed many of them but if you want to be used by God he will prepare you and while he's preparing you you fail those tests he can't use you look what he did with Elijah I mean go back and read it again I mean it's amazing what Elijah did do we want to be like Elijah now when you read more about Elijah you're gonna find Elijah was a great prophet he was a very great prophet but at the same time just like David was a man of God yeah. after his own heart after God's own heart that's what David but how many mistakes did David make right. Elijah did the same thing but David was a great man of God and Elijah was a great man of God but remember they weren't Jesus they're men and we make mistakes.